So I'm going to be starting a new series on my channel. It's going to be nail 101 type of things. And I just wanted to quickly come on here and just let you guys know that I'm not licensed or certified or anything like that. I am not a nail tech. This is all things that I have learned over the years of doing my nails at home. And I just want to share them with you guys. Sometimes I forget that I just go in with products or what I'm doing and I forget that some people don't even know what orange stick is or what cuticle nippers are or like certain things in the nail community that we just go with. So I wanted to start at basics and just get really, really, really basic with explaining some things that I use and do in my nail life. So I'm going to go in the order of how I would do my nails with all of these products just to kind of keep it simple. So the first thing is a cuticle remover. So I have a bare nail. I'm ready to get in, get my nails cleaned up and ready for a manicure. My personal favorite is this London Town Fresh Glow Cuticle Remover. So when you look at your nails, you have this skin here. And then you have little bits of dry skin that kind of peel up right here. This is actually top coat, but so the skin that you're removing is actually the dead skin on your nail plate. You're not actually moving, removing your um, cuticle, which is this part right here, but you use this and you just kind of scrape with a metal scraper, or you can also use an orange stick, which we'll talk about here in a second. And you just come in and put that on, let it sit for a couple minutes. I like this one specifically because it comes with a brush. You just put it on and then you gently scrape around your nail. If you're not used to it, I would recommend using an, uh, the orange stick versus this because it's a little harsh. But this will help clean off your nail plate and make your nails look a lot cleaner. Make them look a lot nicer for um, your application. And it will also help keep your nail plate clean, like I said, so that... You can get your polish where you need it and it's not going to lift up. If you have anything on your nail, it'll lift up and that's why a lot of people have issues with at-home manicures. So, highly recommend a cuticle remover. There are tons out there, all kinds of different options. Um, I really like this one because I feel like it keeps my nails moisturized as well. It's not super drying, so my nails don't look super crazy after I use this cuticle remover and get all of those little bits off. So, like I said, you can also use an, an orange stick. This is just a little wooden stick. Some of them have like a pointy side and then one of these sides, mine just have two sides that are the same. So if I put that cuticle remover on my nail and I wanted to use this, I can push down with this as well. And then I also take this to kind of scrape that dead skin off. Like there'll be a lot of gunk, you just scrape all that off. Um, I also use this for when I paint my nails. If I get any polish on my skin while it is wet, I will come in and just take it off like this. It's a lot harder once it's dry to get it to come off. So I use this for pretty much everything. I use this to move my hair out of my face when my nails are wet. I use this to scratch my head or my elbow or something or whatever. I use these for pretty much everything when my nails are wet. So grab a giant pack of them and you won't regret it. So cuticles are removed. Everything is looking nice and fresh, but now I want to go in and shape my nails. Um, I don't use any emery boards or anything like that. The only thing that I have used for years is a glass file. This actual particular glass file I've had for years. You can clean them, but I don't have any issues with it looking like this. The glass file have a really fine grit, but they're able to be moved back and forth. Um, they're not super harsh on your nail, so you're able to get a really nice um, file without having super harsh harsh edges. The glass or crystal file are they're both the same thing. Um, it's just it's just super nice on your nail. It's really easy, really gentle, and you can't really mess it up using this, so I just think that these are really nice files. This is the three pack that's down below with everything else, and it's just really nice. I really like the glass files. It does take some getting used to with that sound like on your nail, but once you get used to it, the file on your nail will be so much nicer. 
And then once I am done filing my nails, I will take this little buffer block. I don't buff the top of my nails um, it, unless I've done like a gel manicure or something like that, but I almost never buff my nails because you can kind of get carried away, especially if you have thin nails and it's not great for your nail plate. But after I file, you get little bits on this underside of your nail. So with all those little bits, I'll come in and take this and just go in this motion, kind of scrape up, and it'll just take off that inner part. I also sometimes just take my orange stick and scrape that part out. It just depends on what I have going on, but buffer block is super easy to just kind of remove all of that extra kind of filings that you get that stay under your nail. So once everything is all cleaned up, usually my skin is a little rough after all of the filing and everything. So I'll go in with a pair of these cuticle nippers. Mine are pretty old. I actually need a new pair desperately. You want to make sure that these are kind of sharp because if not, they'll just kind of be dull and it's like a dull knife. It's more dangerous than a sharp knife. And I only use these to cut hangnails or if I know some dead skin is right here, I'll go ahead and grab that. But I don't actually come in and like you see those videos where they cut all the way across. If you're moisturizing and you're pushing your cuticles back again with this orange stick every once in a while, you just kind of push them back, then you shouldn't have a big line of dead cuticle there to cut off. Which again, it's not actually a cuticle, it's like your epinicium, but anyway, um, you shouldn't have a whole lot of that. The issue with cutting, if you're comfortable with it, which I do sometimes if I, like I said, have skin here, if you're comfortable with it, you can. The issue is that this is all live skin and then you have a little thin bit of dead skin. So if you come in and you start cutting, then you could cut into live skin and that's when you can get infections and it can get really bad. So I don't recommend cutting. I just recommend using an orange stick, pushing your cuticles back every now and then and keeping them really moisturized and that will help keep that dead skin away. And then every once in a while you go in with your cuticle lure and this and you just kind of push all of that back before you do your manicure every once in a while and your cuticles should be just fine. This is where you start your manicure. This is your base. Um, for starters, this is just to kind of help me open this as well as tell the difference between these two bottles. So ignore the rubber band, but base coats come in all different shapes, sizes, colors, all kinds of different things. Um, my first true love base coat was the Orly Bonder. I do still really like it. It's a rubberized base coat, so it's kind of tacky when it dries, and it just kind of helps grip your polish. I really enjoy that for the longevity of the polish. However, I've noticed that this one does not protect my nail as much, and I get more yellowing when I use this base coat, which isn't an issue with your nails. It's just a um, kind of cosmetic thing that I just don't per personally like when my nails are super yellow but this is a really nice polish for longevity like I said another base coat that I really like is this Zoya naked base so this one is obviously not orange it's just clear but I do feel like it protects my nail a little bit better on keeping um, my nails pretty clear and white instead of yellow I definitely don't think that it kind of has the same longevity as the Orly Bonder, but I personally haven't had any issues. A lot of base coats and nail products are going to depend on your nail chemistry. If you have peeling nails or very thin nails or anything like that, you might want to try a lot of different base coats to figure out which one works best for you, especially if you have problem nails. A great place to start is with a really good base coat. Um, I will say there's different kind of base coats. You can get a ridge filling base coat or a um, super tacky base coat or a peel off base coat. You can get all kinds of different ones. So shop around and find a good base coat that really works with your nails and that'll really help your manicures last. Okay, so your nails are all clean. You have your base coat on and you have put your polish on. One thing that I will say that is incredibly helpful to have around for many different reasons is just a pair of tweezers. I've had these forever. Again, I would like a little bit nicer of a pair just because I feel like these don't quite always get the job done, but I'm um, cat hairs or fuzzies or picking up a cotton ball to fix something. 
using these for so many different things is incredibly helpful. So any pair of tweezers for a multitude of different things that you could need them for. You're going to want to paint your nails and typically they're going to be a mess because mine were a mess for years. And so you want a cleanup brush and this is how we get this clean line here right up against your cuticles with all this polish is we take this little brush with some acetone in a little cup. So I have acetone in this, which I got the acetone from Sally's, and then I got this little dropper bottle from the container store. I transferred into here so that it's easy for me to just take this and put some drops into my little cup. With acetone, you want to make sure that these are going into containers that can handle acetone because it will eat away certain plastics and things like that. It's not great in everything. Um, so you wanna make sure you're working with mostly glass for the acetone. You can get these little cups on Amazon, they'll be down below. But put your acetone in your little cup and then you can take a cleanup brush. So these are the Dollar Elf concealer brush. I think actually they're $2 now because Elf got fancy. but you're going to take this, put it in your acetone, and you'll just start cleaning up your nails. This one here is the Olive and June brush. I haven't used this one as much. I have a couple of them, but there's different options. Lots of different brands have them now. It's actually really common. Back when I was first doing nails, it wasn't as common, at least in my realm of nails. And so this was kind of a popular one to use because as you can see, this is the popular shape for cuticle brushes. So that's how you get that crisp line. Typically I will do the acetone after my top coat just to make sure everything looks seamless, but you can clean up your nails before you put top coat on. It just depends on your preference. But now it's maybe time for some top coats. So there again are a couple different top coats similar to the base coats. It just depends on your preference. I have a favorite top coat from Wet n Wild, but it's discontinued kind of, so I didn't want to show you that. But I have this one from Naked um, Manicure Line at Zoya. This is the Glossy Seal, so it's going to be very glossy. That's what I'm wearing on this manicure. It's super glossy. I really like this one. It's very shiny, which is my preferred um, finish, but I'm... I'm not sure on like the wear. It wears fine, but I know for people that wear their manicures longer than two days, this one isn't just super sturdy. So I'm still on the hunt. I feel like people are always on a hunt for the perfect top coat because they change so frequently. Stuff goes out of stock and all of that. So top coats are an interesting beast, but nonetheless, I do like the glossy seal. Another different kind of variation is a matte top coat. Um, I, I just actually got the matte top coat because I am interested in doing matte nails. They're just not my favorite. And some of the matte polishes that are just automatically matte don't have the best formula. So if I can just put a matte top coat on top of my good formula polishes, I'm hoping that will help. So if you're trying to decide what to purchase, this is a lot of things I know that I would definitely say a top coat is a number one. It kind of helps to seal the polish in. So even if you don't want to do the base coat and all of that, having um, a good top coat can really help last and prolong your manicure. It just depends on your kind of nail chemistry, like I said, but I would say polish and top coat are something that is pretty non-negotiable. So what about taking off your manicure? So I will typically use cotton balls. They're not my favorite because they do leave fuzzies everywhere. Um, I do end up pulling pulling them apart so that I get two out of one. That's just how I do it. I actually do really enjoy these lint square, lint free squares. I don't have a ton of them left. I need to order some more, but they're just like very thin kind of cotton, but they're lint free. So they're not going to put a bunch of fuzzies on your nail, which can end up making your manicure lift or have like weird bubbles and stuff. So any kind of like cotton type of something that you can use to remove your polish is really helpful, but you can literally almost use anything. Um, it's just your personal preference. As far as polish remover goes, it's again, a personal preference thing. I just use the Sally Beauty pink kind and it works wonderfully. I do buy it by the big like 
32 ounce jug or something crazy I think and then I have this twist lock pump bottle that I just put it into and then you just put your cotton ball on top and pump it down so it just makes it a little bit easier I buy it in a bigger pack obviously because I paint my nails more but you can just buy whatever from your store and a normal size not like a hoarder size so I hope this video was helpful. I just wanted to start off with having all of the basic products that I use and kind of explaining why I use them. If you've been watching any of my other videos, you guys have seen these in action, but I'm trying to go back, back, back to the basics so that people who don't do their nails or know nothing about nails can maybe learn a little bit. So comment any questions or anything that you think I've missed down below. I'm sure I've missed a ton of things. Like I said in the beginning, I am not a... Um, certified or licensed nail tech this is just stuff i've learned along the way and stuff that makes my nails happy could be different for your nails it is trial and error i've found a lot of things i don't like and a lot of things i do like over the years so leave any questions down below i hope you enjoyed and there will be a another nail 101 coming soon